This clip of the Texas Bucket List is brought to you by Spirit of Texas Bank, Slovacek Sausage, Germania Insurance, We Rent It, and RV Source. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see to an experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and this week we start things off up in Amarillo at a museum you probably wouldn't expect to find here. You see, it's not dedicated to Route 66 or all the great ranches of the region, but rather recreational vehicles. The great expanse that is the Panhandle calls travelers to explore the open road. The old Route 66 has a plethora of pit stops from the Cadillac Ranch, the Barbed Wire Museum, the Big Texan, and the RV Museum. I really started this together when he was 12. Trent and Jack Sizemore are a father and son duo that have been in the RV business since 1974. No, he started off as a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> and for over 30 years, they've been collecting rare recreational vehicles in this 8,000 square foot metal building in the crossroads of the Panhandle. We've just been buying stuff and putting it away and we had this big building here, but no one knew what was in here. We were very strategic in, in the acquisitions that we did through that 30 years, knowing this was going to be uh, the ultimate uh, consummation of that. Amazing, I can't get over his collection here. We heard so much about it that we thought we needed to come see some of these old beauties. Winnebago's from way back, buses from blockbusters, and a few motorcycles to round out the mobile collection. This archive is sort of an accolade of Americana. This is a 1935 Airstream. It's the oldest Airstream in the world. It was built by Dr. Holloman in his backyard in Florida. This is amazing. Let me show you inside. Wow. So this was all hand done. It was all built by hand. Uh, it looks kind of like something from a Jules Verne movie. Truly. So what did he get from Streamline? Just the plans? The plans and the license to build this. You, with the, the plans, you received one license. It was out of Popular Mechanics, and it cost $5. But then, as you can see, we've been in manufacturing. And I don't know many people anymore that can build something of this design and this quality. I mean, it took years of loving care to build this. It seems like a daunting task. It, it's, it's amazing. This is the only torpedo left in the world. Uh, Wally Bynum, the owner of Airstream, offered the man $50,000 for this in 1947. Oh my gosh. So, I don't want to know what you guys paid for it. Well, I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Was it this or a Ferrari or this or a Corvette? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Pleading the fifth there. Yes. The oldest RV in the world. You'll find that here too. This is the oldest motorhome in existence. It's a 1921 uh, Lampstead camp car built by Anheuser-Busch. They actually built five of them. There's two of them left. This one and one in the museum in Harris in Reno, Nevada. Wow. So there's got to be a cooler in there, right? I there should be. I've, I've looked for it, but I haven't found it. Even the super campy campers of the 70s are all restored and maintained to the sparkling superfly semblance that was somehow in style. The tacky patterns, you know? Yeah, the cheesy patterns on the, on the couches. You can hear them talking. Boy, remember when mom and dad took us in that tent camper just like this back in the 70s and the great fun that we had as a family. Jack and Trent are incredibly tedious about recreating what life was like during the time period of each trailer. I do a lot of barbing in the fall, and I go everywhere I can go, every garage sale, every yard sale, every junk store, find, finding all the old toys and games that go along with these and the books, and people and then go back to their era and remember how much fun they had. And that's one thing we've tried to do in every RV. When you walk in, um, all the dishes, the appliances, all the extra things that are in the trailer are from that era. These old school campers are a far cry from what you can find today. But telling this story isn't just about a fond look at the fixtures and patterns of the past. This is about getting out there and seeing the world from a perspective 
with propulsion. It allows you that time to decompress and to really enjoy friends, family, and the, the great outdoors that God has given us. You gotta hook up the trailer or you gotta buy an RV and drive it, but you gotta get on the road. It's independence, it's nice. From the time man began, people have adventured and, and tried to move into new frontiers. And so that spirit, it keeps it alive. And this keeps the history of the RV industry alive. A lot of people that have used these RVs, they have kicked the bucket, but they had a great time before they did. So come experience the life that they did. Mm -hmm.